Hi, this is Quentin Flores with cbctmadeeasy.com. And uh, in this video, we're going to focus on the ins and outs of using Sedexis 4 uh, for your SHIC-33 intraoral sensors. We're going to go through a brief process of how to capture and also just some basic navigation of uh, the timeline, the light box, using the compare feature. Uh, just a few things that you'll probably use on a daily basis uh, and make you a little bit more comfortable with the software. So uh, as we're looking at uh, my screen here and you see Sedexis 4 is open, first thing we're going to want to do is pick a patient up here on the top workflow bar. So I'm going to use our IO demo patient and I am going to click on that and go to register and exposure because this is what you would do if you are going to acquire an image. So as you can see on our exposure screen right now, it doesn't really have anything for us to select. So I'm actually going to plug a SHIC sensor into my computer so that it gives us not only the option to select the USB interface, but now it gives us the option to select our SHIC-33 sensor. So when I click on that, after a quick load, it will ask us to select a sensor template. So these are the pre-built sensor templates, but it's also very, very easy uh, to create new templates for uh, a hygiene member, a dental assistant, and you can create multiples, name them different things. Uh, there's actually a separate video uh, on the CBCT Made Easy website uh, that shows you how to create a new template. Um, let's just pick the bite wing template for now. So once I have this selected, I can go to Start Acquisition, and it will take me to our next screen. So a few things to point out. Um, when you see 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's because we're using a 4 byte wing template. And the flashing green lets us know that the sensor and software are ready to acquire an image. Uh, down here, under Anatomic Regions, you'll see that we have teeth number 1, 2, 32, and 31 highlighted, and that's because they are pre-selected in our template, uh, which allows us to help sort and filter uh, when we're on the timeline, uh, which we will go through in a little bit here. So if you want to go out of order, you would just click on a different number. You could go to three, four, two, whatever you would like, um, but the template will, of course, auto-progress as you're acquiring your images. Um, if everything's captured well and well exposed, you do not have to go back and click the mouse um, until you're all done with the full series. So um, we're not going to actually take an image right now, um, but if you did take a successful image, it's going to show up in this area right here in the selected image area. A couple things to point out. Um, down here in the bottom left hand corner of the selected image square, these two buttons will rotate the image left to right. And this little cubed bar represents exposure. So we want to be right in the middle, if not in this little sweet spot area. These five sort of bluish cubes, that's where you would really like to be. Um, Underexposure will lead to a degradation in diagnostic quality. So we always want to make sure that we are properly exposing the SHIC-33 sensor. And this bottom button, excuse me, in the bottom right-hand corner, it's a half arrow, will allow you to recapture an image. So let's say we were on template number two, number three, template three, and we took an image that we didn't like, we would highlight it and then go and hit this button right here. It'll bring up a side-by-side -side screen and then you'll reshoot the image and then select which one you prefer. And then that will get put into the template as we move into the light box. So let's imagine we just took four images. We would then uh, click finish down here. I know it's not highlighted because we haven't taken anything, but it would move us into the light box. So I'm gonna show us a different way to move into the light box since we're not live acquiring. And that will take us back to our start menu at first. Patient. Once again, I am going to go to our IO demo patient. And I'm going to access the light box through our timeline. But let me show you a little bit about the timeline first since we're here. 
this is where we chronologically store all of your patient's images. So we can have our sensor images, 3D volumes, we can have our uh, intraoral camera shots, all different types of images, pans, CEPHs, everything can be stored here. So let's see as we scroll through, um, let's look for, well, let's just say, let's go here. Uh, I want to show you just a couple different ways to navigate. So you can click and hold and pull images down into this active area at the bottom. And you can click and hold as many as you would like. And if we did that, we would bring all of these into the light box by clicking this button here. Now I'm going to click on one image to release all the images except for the one I just clicked on. And if another way you want to bring multiple images in is just like in your computer, if you click one, hold control. And now as I can go through different dates, while I'm holding control, every image that I click is getting added down here into our active area that once again can be taken into our light box. Now, let's say we want to pull in this all these images here on 412 that make up a full FMX template. I can click, hold shift, hover over the right hand side, which will auto, automatically make everything move. I can click here to select. And now I have all these images selected down here in the active area. But what also might be just as easy is actually to collect the far right template. And I can open all the images as part of the template. And that is sometimes quite a bit easier. So let's do that. So now that I have the template selected, I'm going to click Lightbox. And now uh, in a few seconds here, uh, we are going to open our Lightbox with the full FMX and all those images for us to review. One second here and we'll be able to start taking a look at basic light box navigation. All right, so we have our images open. And as you can see, this is our basic FMX format. Now, if I wanna move some of these images, what you would need to do is click on an image and then hover on the middle upper portion when you see the four arrow crosshairs and I can click and drag and move them around wherever I would like. Click one, move it. Now, obviously, I've made a mess of things, so if I wanted to snap everything back to its original position, what I would need to do is go over to the right-hand side under Tools, click. It will expand the whole toolbar, and under Layout, I can click the one button that you see, and it will snap everything back into the original template position. Now, there's a couple things that you can do um, when we right-click on an image. So if I right click on an image, it allows me to do a few things. Um, let's start from the bottom actually. If you've taken an image on the wrong patient, I can do assign image to another patient. So I could click on that and it will ask me which patient I want it to assign it to. So I'm not gonna do that, but this is an example of how I would do that. And you can do that with 3D volumes, pans, any type of image. Now when I right click on the image again, I can change image order if I would like. So if I click here, it will show me all images that I've acquired. And then I can drag and drop the images if I took them out of order. This is a really cool feature because uh, every once in a while, uh, you'll accidentally take an image where you weren't supposed to. And this just makes it very simple to move things back and forth. As we have a lot of images open and I'm just using a laptop, this will take a second here. So for instance, if this PA needs to be over here, I can click on this PA, click hold, 
and I can pull it over to the other side. And now this one and this one have flipped. I can click and hold and move it back and put it in its proper position. Same, let's say these anterior PAs, click and hold, switch, click and hold, switch. I haven't done any real changes now because I moved everything back to where it's supposed to be, so I'm just going to press cancel. So once again, right clicking will also allow me to delete an image and you have to set an administrator password to be able to do that. But this is where you could do it. Uh, and then you could also, I wanna show you retake an individual exposure. So let's say all of your images look great except for one. So if you wanna replace that, you would just do retake individual exposure and it's going to uh, fire up our acquisition screen because I still have our ship sensor plugged in. And as this is pulling up, uh, you'll see all the images will pop up here, but it pulls up the retake screen. And what it's gonna allow me to do is look at our current image on the left-hand side and now you'll see the flashing new image template, which lets us know that the software is ready to acquire a new image. And then I can go ahead and acquire that image and then look them side by side and decide if I wanna keep the old image or put the new image in the place of it with the FMX. So that was our first image on the left. If I wanted to acquire a new one, I could do so and then choose which one I want. So let's pretend I did, we'll keep the current image. So I'm just gonna cancel out of here and go back into our light box. So I'm gonna finish. And we'll go back to our light box and show a few more features that we All right, so we are back in our light box and a couple other navigation things I wanna point out real quick. So if you want to maximize an image, you can select it. Uh, and then right here, there's this little computer maximize image button. So we can click here and it will make our image go full screen. And to minimize, I will go back and do normal view. Click that. It will take me back smaller. Um, a really easy shortcut is to also use your space bar. So I'm clicking my space bar to maximize, space bar to minimize. Now, we get a lot of questions about how do I cycle through my images when they're maximized. And to do so, let's click the space bar to maximize again. And um, if you are in version 4.3, you can actually hold control and press tab and very easily navigate through all of the different images that you have open in your light box. So each time you see an image change, it's because I'm holding control and pressing the tab key. Spacebar again minimizes and takes me back to our light box where I can see all of the images that we've taken. So uh, now let's focus on some of our tools. Let me go to the toolbar on the right hand side. So if I click it, once again, it maximizes. And I'm gonna lock it into place this time so you can see everything that we can do with this. So when I lock it into place, it should automatically adjust your screen so that you can see all the different images while looking at your toolbar. So a couple things I wanna point out. Um, first being under the analysis section, this little half black, half orange orb. And basically what this does is allows you to uh, freehand adjust the brightness and contrast. So to do so, I'm going to take a bite wing and actually maximize it. And now when I click on the freehand orb, uh, if I click and hold up and down changes the brightness, left and right changes the contrast. So um, if you follow my mouse and look here at the brightness and contrast little dials or gauges, uh, notice when I'm clicking and change these, notice how those percentages change. So that's how you know how you're adjusting the brightness and contrast. And if you ever wanna remove those next to this orb, if I click the one with the arrow, notice what happens when I click it, these turn blue, whereas when I adjust them, they turn orange. So that's a really easy indicator to know if the image has been adjusted. 
um, because they will be orange and not blue. So let me go back to the original. Um, what we can also do is create, for instance, a length measurement. You can create annotations. Uh, let's do a length measurement. So just to show you real quick, click here. If I click once, it drops the first point. And if you want to drop a second point, you click again and so on. You can create as many points as you like. To finish the measurement, you will double click. So I've created my measurements here. You can click this to hide the measurement, click the eye again to show it, and then click the recycle bin to get rid of it if you'd like. Um, intraoral enhancements. These are for the SHIC-33 sensor, which you've become accustomed to. Basically, we can change the task mode from general to, say, restorative, which helps us focus on interproximal decay, um, perio, hygiene. So we have our five traditional task modes that you've become accustomed to. Uh, and what we can also then do is change the sharpness with our slider bar. So clicking and holding, we can move it left or right, right to sharpen, left to uh, unsharpen the image. So the, for instance, say 70 to 75% that you might have it set at uh, can be customized and set up in the toolbars, um, or you can adjust it each time if you'd like to. As I scroll down in the toolbar, we notice a couple different things down here. Uh, I will point out um, that the anatomic region is shown here. And those numbers show up, those tooth numbers, because that is what was selected in the template that we used. Um, if you want to change that, you can click these three little dots, and you can add or subtract teeth if they appear or are not showing up in that particular image. Um, this is our exposure meter. So you'll notice this image is actually slightly underexposed because we'd like it to be at the zero or a little bit higher. Um, and then also one thing I really think is neat is that under device serial number, it will show us the serial number of the sensor that was used. Reason this is great is because if there happens to be some troubleshooting that needs to be done, uh, we can very easily communicate with tech support which sensor was used for that particular image. Uh, so that's something that helps save a lot of time should you ever need technical support. So if I unselect the toolbar and go to diagnose tab diagnosis excuse me you'll notice i can add notes for a particular tooth by clicking say if number tooth has decay i can just type in decay any notes that i would like click the plus button to save it um, or then i can click the recycle bin to remove it so i'm going to minimize this particular tooth now, um, one thing that's pretty neat is our compare feature. So I have this bite wing, let's say right here, and I want to compare this to a bite wing that was taken, uh, say six months ago. What I can do is select the image, go over to the tool bar on the right hand side, and under new examination, let's click compare. What's gonna happen now is it's gonna open a new workspace. So after this processes, a workspace can be found at the bottom of your screen. So workspaces down here, we have our original light box with our entire FMX, but now we have a compare workspace as well. Well, of course, we need a image to compare it to. So we don't have to leave this screen, which is really intuitive. We just go over to the left and to gallery, click here, and now you'll see a miniature version of our entire timeline. So I'm just going to pick a different bite wing to compare it to. And since this is our demo patient, this is a different bite wing, um, but it will still show us the same functionality. So it'll bring these images up side by side. And imagine if we're trying to look at the interproximal of the premolars with either image, when I hold my mouse over that area and use my scroll wheel, it zooms in on both sides, on both images, excuse me, in the same area. Now it's not matching up perfectly because these are different teeth, but to illustrate that point, why don't I just open up two of the same image so you can see that a little bit better. 
once again, pick a two to compare it to. So right here, let's use the same bite wing. Now that we're looking at the same image, oh, I opened up three. You can do a maximum of four at a time, but if we want to look at the interproximal decay here, by scrolling on one, notice it scrolls in on the same point on all three images. So that's a really cool feature to show your patients, maybe from a hygiene perspective, what's happened over the last six months or 12 months. I can right click and I can desynchronize the views, which means I can scroll in on all of them a little bit differently. So they're not all linked up now. So that's a pretty cool compare feature. So if I wanna close that out, what I can do is just click the X at the bottom and it takes me back to my original light box with my FMX template. So I wanted to show you um, the output options. So if you go up to our workflow toolbar, you can click output. You can email or do 2D exports if you'd like, very simple. Um, I can press the delete button on my keyboard to go back. Um, and one last thing I'll show you is to save something as a session. So a session can be not just your typical FMX or Lightbox, but let's say for instance, I wanted to go to my gallery and pull in a couple other images. Let's say I wanted to pull in these two intraoral images so I could pull them down here, open them up. They're going to get added into what my current light box is. I know it's a little bit large and distorted, but if I wanted to save this, I could go to Session Gallery, Save As. Let's just save it as Video Tutorial Example. If I can spell that right save. Now if I close this patient out and let's say I want to pull that session up again without having to open the FMX and then pull each image in separately, I can go back to patient, I'll demo patient. Now back on our timeline, I can go to this upper right hand corner. I can click on sessions. It does a little twirl and now you can see all the sessions that I've saved for this patient. If I double click on this session, it will open up the entire light box with the images that I had from just a few seconds ago. So as we wait for this to open up, this is by no means every single tip and trick for navigating SIDXS4 from a SHIC-33 and intraoral sensor perspective, um, but it should give you the basic uh, gist of things and allow you to be dangerous enough to feel confident with the software on a daily basis. Uh, there's several other individual videos that can show you how to navigate the software. Um, it's really fun to use and it's a great tool to use with your patients um, built for the 2000s and it's something that you really will enjoy when you get the hang of it. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.